Hey, Browns fans, it's time to gear up for a pain-free 2022 NFL season for your Cleveland Browns with new friends of the show, Buckeye Law Group. If you've been injured in a car accident, a slip and fall, a work accident, or even if you've been buried into the ground by Miles Garrett or stiff-armed by Nick Chubb, you need to call Buckeye Law Group today at 1-800-411-PAIN. Their attorneys will fight for the money you deserve. Buckeye Law Group's attorneys have recovered over $1 billion for their clients throughout the entire country. So don't make the mistake of calling just any other attorney. Call attorneys you can trust. And best of all, they're Browns fans just like you. Call our friends from Buckeye Law Group at 1-800-411-PAIN. After 911, call 411. That's 1-800-411-PAIN. 1-800-411-7246. That's Buckeye Law Group located at 1300 East 9th Street, Suite 1210 in Cleveland, Ohio. Buckeye Law Group, proud fans of the Cleveland Browns just like you. Hey, Dog Pack, what a relief. The season's over and 7 and 10 is the final tally. Everything went, went the way we didn't want it to. Basically, our linebackers and DTs were bowling pins for these bowling ball running backs to run through, and our defense couldn't get off the field, so Joe, you're gone. Offensively, Brissett was awesome, but when Watson was in, I'm not really even sure what we're doing. The receivers didn't help and no separation. Anyways, let's break it down, boys. Let's kick this thing off. <laughs> Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, John Nye, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? If there's any left, welcome to the Dogs Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, gambling Mike, legal in Ohio wow. now. A couple of my buddies, one hit for 750 the other day. Another one hit for 600. Ray hit, Finney hit for 600. Nice, nice, nice. So nice. Okay. Uh, use code TPPN, DraftKings Sportsbook. Don't throw your life away, but so far everybody seems to be having a lot of fun with <laughs> legal gambling. Play so, responsibly. Play Have responsibly. Uh, if you want to get your answers on the show, head to thedogspodcast.com, tap, leave voicemail. Uh, today we're going to get into what was a sorry end of the season for the Browns. Also going to address the Joe Woods firing and who are some possible candidates to replace him. Before we do, though, I want to remind you guys to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Make sure you tap the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. If you prefer to just listen to the show, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Lastly, if you're looking for more dogs content, head to jointhedogs.com. Become an official dog pack member on the Patreon page. We are crowning five fantasy winners today, four league champions and an overall champion in points um so that's five pieces of merch we're giving out actually 10 because everybody gets two things um we're giving stuff away pretty much every month now these days so uh we are always trying to give back to those guys we give them priority when it comes to things in the episodes they get to choose the uh the topics for the after hours episodes that you get every week so you get an extra episode you get access to the private discord it's just a ton of fun for everybody and to be quite honest thank god now that the season is done the show is going to become way more fun. It's a, it's more all you know. It's a lot less talking about how bad the Browns suck, and a lot more about uh, hypotheticals, hot takes, um, speculation, just like kind of a lot of fun stuff. So now is a great time to jump into the dog pack because the after hours, it's all that stuff, and then we talk movies, comics, video games. Bad haircuts, which I'm wearing a hat because I haven't got one in a while. <laughs> uh, so it's just there's a. A lot of good stuff in there. So if you want to hang out with us more, you want access to that private Discord, which everybody's a part of, um, join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. So coming in today, Browns wrap up their season, like Kenny Mack said, seven and ten. Which is crazy how disappointed we are at seven and ten when you look back just a few years ago, we won one game in uh <laughs> in two seasons. So we have, even though this turnaround's not done, we have made progress. I guess one, I think we've reset expectations a couple of years ago. Seven wins was a Super Bowl for us. Like we, we would have been ecstatic, literally Baker's rookie year. We were pumped to go seven and nine. Um, so expert, we've reset expectations. I feel like, um, and we won what seven games last year, seven games this year isn't where we want to be, but we're slowly turning the corner. It's frustrating when you watch other teams do it way quicker you know, mm-hmm. the Jacksonville Jaguars get the number one overall pick two years in a row, and all of a sudden they're in the playoffs. Yep. Um, easier division. It sucks the Browns got to play in the, their division. But um, you watch the Lions 
just, you know, last year what, they didn't win very many games. And then this year turned around and didn't make the playoffs. But I think there's a lot of NFC teams happy the Lions didn't make the playoffs. That's fair. Um, and I want to, first of all, <clears throat> before we get into us, I was right. The Lions finished above the Packers. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm going to bring this go. up from now until pff, probably next season when I'm right about something else. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was, I've never been a bigger fan of another team that wasn't the Browns than I was watching the Lions-Packers game last night. When they went forward on fourth and one and a half and got it, I was literally like fist pumping in my living room like the Browns <laughs> had just won a football game. I've never wanted to have been right about something more in my life, and I was 100% right. Well, the thing that was irritating watching that game, it, other than knowing that you were going to be freaking insufferable after all this, <laughs> was, you know, they, they asked um, – Oh my gosh! What's the Lions? Cook? Campbell, Dan Campbell, Campbell. Dan Campbell. You know what was it after the sometime in this after the first quarter? I think and said, "Well, you just found out that you've been eliminated." You know, and mm-hmm. he's like, "I don't care. We're out here to play. We don't want them to go." Yes, and yep. I'm like, and they played like it. They played like they did not want their division rival to make the playoffs, and I did not feel like the Browns had any bit of that yesterday. I was going to I was going to use that to segue. It was frustrating to watch the Browns come out. In a game where we didn't really have anything to play for, Pittsburgh's trying to make the playoffs, yep. and we lay an egg. We give up twenty eight points to Kenny Pickett <laughs> in this. In in there isn't a Steelers fan in the country that doesn't want to fire their offensive coordinator, and we give up twenty eight points to him. Um, and then to then Sunday night, watch the Lions play in a, the exact same position, and, and almost worse. At least the Browns knew they were eliminated for a week. Think of the letdown. They just found out. They're getting all amped up to play, and then it's like, oh, hey, this game doesn't mean anything. And you're like, oh, that sucks. And yeah. To not have a letdown and to go out there and play like that against the Packers and keep them out of the playoffs, that is an indictment to me on the coaching staff of the Cleveland Browns. And uh-huh. I I am tr- trying to be patient, and I want to bring Kevin Stefanski back. And it's he's coming back, or yeah. else he would have been fired already too. Um, By the way, I, we're all wearing black for a reason. Yes. Except for Justin, right? I didn't even know that we were doing that. So. <laughs> it kind of happened by uh, accident. I don't know what's going on. Black we're, Monday, everybody. We're all cycled up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Synced up, baby. Yeah. Um, but no, it, but it is getting harder to like go to bat for him for some things. To come out, I mean, we had penalty. I feel like we had a million penalties. You want to? I can bring them up. I right got here. it pulled up right here. But I felt like, and they were always we untimely. We had nine, nine, nine penalties. They're always drive killers. Jedrick yep. Wills is <laughs> always good for at least one drive killing penalty. Um, this was one of the poorest officiated games I've seen. By the way, I'm not going to say the Browns win the game if the officiating is better. We we sucked. Yep. We didn't deserve to win no, the yeah, game. Absolutely. But other than that, Cam Hayward roughing the passer, which was abysmal. Which, but I've seen that called a million times because he picked him up and slammed him. It's still, in my opinion, a terrible call. This was the uh, an awful, uh, officiated well, game. You said we gave up twenty eight points to Kenny Pickett. We gave up thirty five. They just didn't know that. They I was going to say, a touch- I mean, <laughs> yeah, they for sure. Have, I mean, we seriously, that was a touchdown. More. Najee had a touchdown. Early Absolutely, in the game. they should have had seven more. Yes. Yep. Um, I didn't think Martin Emerson. With no. pass interference at the, the Not goal even close. Line. No, and the and the uh, the announcer's like, he's got him hooked. He's turned. No, he did not hook him, and he didn't. His arm might have been like lightly back there. It did not hook him, and it did not. And it was him. even funny because the ref even announced number forty two, and they were like, that was on Tony Fields. And then you could even the broadcasters like, hang on a second. Oh, maybe he meant twenty two. Grant Delpit. No, he was in the middle of the field. Um, I yep. guess it was Martin Emerson. <laughs> like they didn't even know what was going on. It was terrible. Soft. Um, yeah. The Ill- the illegal contact. I haven't heard illegal contact get called <laughs> in. I couldn't even tell you when. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It just it it was terrible. But um, yeah. What what did you guys think of just the effort of the Browns yesterday? What effort are we speaking of? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. <sighs> to me. I just think we have a very, and I hate to use this word, but I think we're just a very soft and undisciplined team. I mean, it, when it just comes down to it, I just, all year it's been the same kind of stuff. you said it a bunch of times. I think we read our, you know, newspaper clippings and stuff like that. The clowny news this week, just everything. We just are very dysfunctional. Oh, and wow. we've been dysfunctional for my entire life. My entire life, it's been this. But it's just different 
coaches and different staff. It's the, always the same thing. I end the year and I go, well, I guess maybe uh, maybe next year will be a little bit better. Always next year, right? I'm getting tired of that. <laughs> we didn't tired know of that crap. until the Dolphins won. We didn't know that the Steelers yeah. were going to be eliminated. But in my opinion, we did have something to play for. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We had – that is the – Brown's biggest rival historically. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I hate the Ravens more than anybody, except for maybe Michigan. The Ravens that have lost three of their last four? I just don't like them. (laughs) The Steelers, like, they're good. I know they're good, and most of their fans, like, don't bother me. So I don't, don't? Th- I don't think too hard about them, but they're <laughs> no, the yeah. they're this huge rival. Like they're a huge Browns rival. I freaking hate them too. And yes. we could, mm, if the Dolphins lose, the Steelers are in. Yep. We could end that, <laughs> and we don't even try. It's super frustrating. Yeah, it sucks. It seems sometimes that we care more than the players, and I I think that's a that could be true. Like for them, it's a job, and we're fans, we're fanatics. So I can get that, but it like. The Lions fans didn't care more than the Lions players last night. Mm -mm. Jamal Williams wanted to win that game. Yes, he Mm -hmm. did. You know what I mean? And um, it's like you said, it's frustrating. I saw Jimmy Haslam would have to. We would have to go undefeated for like the next four years to for him to even be five hundred in his owner (laughs) career. It's it's just been dysfunction, dysfunction. And I'm going to give it next. I'm giving it next year with Kevin Stefanski and whatever new defensive coordinator we bring in. Um. But Kevin Stefanski needs to really evaluate his offense and just the way he does things because um, he's going to be on a short leash next year. I think like if we come out next year and we're zero and three, yeah, you know, two and five, I I don't think he survives the season. I agree completely. I, yeah, the seat is so hot. It's it's, it's incredibly so hot, hot right now. Um, and I'm watching this game and it, it's crazy. I know the offensive line has been bad. Um for weeks now and PFF has this graded like seven. That is BS. I watch the games. We don't block for shit. <laughs> no. Not okay. At all. Um, but to be such a well-oiled machine with Jacoby Brissett, you know, top 10 offense in efficiency and points and yards and stuff like that. And then for Deshaun to come back and I know he's rusty, especially his first couple of weeks, but he showed glimpses here and there. I just don't know if the, Jacoby fit this offense because he's, He's not that good. And that might sound weird, but it, he did his drop straight to where Coach Stefanski told him to throw the ball, and it was timing-based. That's not Deshaun's game. You know, Deshaun is a freelancer. He's Mahomes-ish, okay? So I don't know if this, like, precision-based, timing-based three steps and it goes right. I don't know if this plays to Deshaun's strengths that well. And, and, and we'll see because supposedly what Kevin Stefanski told Deshaun was like the biggest reason why he came to Cleveland. But, man, it everything looked so tough for the offense once we had Deshaun. The only time it didn't was when he got into, you know, a rhythm and we just had we just kind of like let him go. You know, the line's not blocking, so he's just kind of running around scrambling, making plays, and then it was, we moved the ball a little bit, but it's like in the base of our offense, we could not do anything. Um, before we don't want to talk about the whole game before we get to your guys' emails or voicemails. Uh, we got a few voicemails about the game, and then we got a few voicemails about the Joe Woods firing. So we don't want to talk about the whole game and listen to your voicemails, and they didn't matter. So why don't we go ahead and jump into these? First one's from Trace. What's up, guys? Um, just finished watching it. Just pure disappointment over and over and over again. I thought for once, or at least in my lifetime, that we'd sweep the Steelers this year, but that ain't going to happen. The officiating, good God, it was horrible. Um, Face mask, ticky-tack PIs. But honestly, what what gets me the most is this was going to be my last year watching the Browns at home. I'm shipping off to the Air Force this summer, and it was going to be my last time watching the Browns with my family. And it was just pure disappointment this season, and I really wish it was a different outcome. I pray and hope that Joe Woods is fired tomorrow. If he's not, I might lose it. And overall, it was just a bad game. Deshaun Watson showing more scramble ability somewhat, and the two picks definitely not helping whatsoever. Just really looking for a revamp in the offseason. So hopefully uh, next year is better. So go Browns, and see you guys. 
Well, first of all, man, good luck in the Air Force. Yeah, absolutely. For yeah, service. absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't believe we talked about the officiating and we didn't bring up that face mask, the missed face mask call. Where that's one. why I didn't feel so bad about the uh, the roughing the passer. Mm-hmm. How can you not see that? And if you watch a still, the officials literally looking right at. That's it. what I don't get because, like the roughing the passer, they go out of their way to protect the quarterback all the time, like to the point where it's like almost stupid to watch some of these plays. Guy gets dragged down by his face mask and they don't call it. It's unbelievable. I mean, and it's so. It's got to be easy to catch a face mask because you can see it. I mean, the the way the head turns, it, it's obvious yeah. every time. It's like that was a face mask. You would think he'd call it even if he just saw the head jerk. Even if he didn't grab his face mask, and we could be, and if he didn't, then they could be talking about how it's a bad call. But you would think just seeing the head jerk, they would call it out of safety. You know, just yeah. like they call roughing the passer anytime the quarterback gets hit, just to be safe. Right. It right. seems. You know, you'd think, oh, I saw his head jerk. I don't even know if he grabbed his face mask, but. Here. Penalty. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It, it was terrible. Um, good news for you, buddy. Joe Woods was fired. Yes. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm happy you got that piece of good news. Also, hopefully it's not the last time you get to watch with your family. I hope you're not gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like, hopefully it's a short, you know, not. Maybe, you know, like depending on what how long your service is or if you get, you know, your deployment somewhere. But. Hopefully it's not forever, man. <laughs> Maybe I'll just like go to Tokyo and just love it. And that's and just true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife was in the National Guard, and she said Air Force has it pretty nice. We should ask Andy Kaiser. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, should do that. <laughs> but uh, Andy Kaiser, friend of ours, Air Force guy, dog pack member. Yes, plane flyer. <laughs> 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 this episode is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. The NFL playoff picture is locked in, and my go-to place for wild card round action is DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To kick off the road to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can get a no-sweat bet each day of the wild card round this weekend. And mind you guys, wild card weekend is Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Just place any NFL bet of your choice, and if it loses, you'll get a free bet back up to $10. Action so good, why bet NFL playoffs anywhere else? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code TPPN. New customers can bet just $5 on the NFL and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook using code TPPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Christmas is over, but if you missed the opportunity to give the gift of Omaha Steaks to somebody you love, or if they didn't give you the gift of Omaha Steaks, it's all good. Right now, you can take advantage of Omaha Steaks end of season sale, 50% off site-wide. Plus, if you use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, at checkout, you'll get an additional $30 off your order. So if Santa Claus did you dirty this Christmas, send yourself an assortment of mouth-watering favorites guaranteed to just melt your taste buds like the legendary Butcher's Cut Filet Mignon, air-chilled boneless chicken, ultra-juicy steak burgers, and even easy-to-prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. Don't forget to throw in an order of the caramel apple tartlets for dessert. Those things are absolutely amazing. So don't get too down in the end of Christmas blues. Give yourself the gift of a new year with Omaha Steaks. Right now, end of season sale, 50% off site-wide. And make sure when you go and you place your order, use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out. Get that extra $30 off your order and ring in the new year in delicious style. Uh, but no, we got another voicemail we can get to real quick. Yeah, let's hear from Phil quick. Hey guys, it's Phil. I'm going to do my best to keep this uh, YouTube appropriate. <laughs> but that was an absolutely pathetic performance today. I'm honestly ready to f- everyone. I want everyone gone. The pasta gone. I want Barry gone. The entire coaching staff. This team quit. They have no fire. Even when we were getting all those bad, horrible calls, what was his fancy doing? Was he not going at the, after the refs? No. He was facing his stupid little playbook. Even though we had horrible calls called against us, we were still going to lose that game. It didn't matter. You can't even be, blame the referees. You know, it was one of the most probably worst officiated games I've seen in a long time. I just uh, – this team, I have no hope. I don't care <laughs> We Deshaun Watson looks like trash. I don't think this coaching staff isn't it, and we can't fire the owners, but we can sure as hell fire everybody else. I'm just over it. Unless big changes come, it's gonna be the same shit every day, every year. All right, guys, that's my take on the end of the season. 
I I get what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's where we're at, man. And my thing too, like I always think about like stuff like this. What is Paul B- D. Podesta doing right right now? Like uh, during the season, what what kind of value does he really bring to our organization? I think. I mean, I would imagine at some point in the season he starts scouting. <laughs> I would hope so too. <laughs> draft you? I don't know. Draft. Who knows? And um, he. I don't know. <laughs> here's, okay, the deal. Here's, that's where I'm at. here's the deal. If it's that's where I'm at. if it's more of the same next year, um, he the dude's got to go. That's they're all like, gone. um, it didn't take this long in baseball. You know, like his his analytical approach. You know, like I feel like I don't know. Maybe Moneyball super inaccurate. <laughs> you know, maybe Brad Pitt wasn't there, but uh, <laughs> but I feel like, um. Like they turned the A's, like they kept the A's relevant with his approach pretty much right away. And I, I guess I could do some research on that. Any A's fans out there want to help me out? Um, but at this point in football, like there's two in baseball, I feel like you can be a little analytical because it's it's such a, like a hard, like hitting and stuff is so hard and it's such an easy thing to measure. In football, the weather is your guy playing well that day I, is I this dude just whooping them every time you know there's other factors in football baseball is the most individual team sport there is i think right i mean where when you're at the plate you're not up there with your whole team it's just you yeah and you can be the best player in the world and be on a bad team and y- your team right. can win no games and you can still go to the hall of fame right like <laughs> you if you're the left fielder like you don't have anybody else i mean yeah the center fielder's over there but he's doing his job yeah. It's just you. Like it's football is so. I mean, left tackle. Well, if the left guard's not doing his job, you're you're screwed. Yep. You know, center, you're screwed. If the guys was, like everybody, it's such a team sport. Everyone's got to flow and gel and work uh, together. You see it on the defense. Ten guys do their job, and John Johnson doesn't, and we give up a touchdown. Right. Yep. Yep. I don't know. All I know is <clears throat> we're like three years into this, right? Oh, he's been, he's been. Is it only three years? Because it feels like he he was eternity. around before. And then I'm pretty sure he left for a year or two, and then he came back. But my thing is, I'm like, and this is, like, from the top down. I was talking to Josh about this. Like, there, I, we got to get somewhere. Like, work three years in. Stefanski's first year, he got, what, 10, 11 wins? And then he got eight last year, and he got seven this year. Uh, the, uh, so it's, it's that if it was another city, I don't know. I don't know that he's still a head coach. You've seen coaches get fired for, for a lot less. For way less. Um, <sighs> See, okay, we, not many coaches get fired if you if you're winning seven and eight games. No, but especially when we went one and thirty one before. He but the, the difference to me though in those two scenarios is the one and thirty one roster was a one and thirty one roster. It was it was crap garbage. This roster that Kevin's not having a winning record with is a very good roster. I mean, these players. I mean, it, we think it, so. it's inexcusable. We but the thing is, we've seen it. We've seen when the guys leave this team, go play for a different D coordinator. They excel. We see the guys whenever Joe Woods, quote unquote, dumbs it down for a game and lets the guys just do their, you know, play where they're supposed to play. They look good. It, I mean, our offense was what top five, ten in efficiency all season until Jacoby went out. So it's yeah. just, like it's there. What? Where do you guys stand on like the? Oh, I hear this a lot. Well, first of all, before I get to that, I'm not <laughs> anti analytics. Every, all the good teams use analytics. So all these people who are just like who rag on the analytics side of the Browns, you, every team uses it. Go root for another team; they're using analytics. The Ravens use them yeah, a ton. You, I mean, everybody. But does. it's you have to balance them. It can't just be all. You have to use them. You use analytics as a tool to inform your decisions. Analytics just can't be your decisions. And the problem is, I think at the end of the day, there's no gut decisions. It's analytics yes. driving the decisions too much for the Browns. Where, like you said, use the analytics to make your decision. But at the end, if you're like, no, I, I know in my gut as a football move, this is what I'm going to do right here, right now. I don't feel like that move gets made. No, like like John Harbaugh gets told like when to go forward on fourth down stuff by their analytical guy. And like he hey, you should go for it here. You shouldn't go for it here. That, but he'll look at Lamar and be like, what do you think? Can you get this? And Lamar will say, let's go for it. And then they'll go for it. Like that, that doesn't happen for the Browns. There has to be a marriage between the two. Um, so I'm not anti analytics, but we got to use them better. They're a tool. They shouldn't be the, the Bible. Right. They're, they should be a tool. Um, 
But what, where do you guys stand on like this? Like he mentioned, he's we're getting these bad calls, and Kevin Stefanski's not freaking out, yelling at the refs and stuff like that. Where do you guys stand on that? Yeah, I see where he's coming from. I, I like to see my head coach with a little bit of frustration. I don't, I don't like an overly animated, mad about everything kind of head coach. But I, I see where this guy's coming from, though. I do real. think that this is part of, and I know we've had this discussion before. I know there are coaches that can do it successfully as far as head coach and calling plays. Andy Reid, we talk about Sean McVay, player, you know, guys like that. But I think that's part of the problem with Kevin is, you know, on offense, there's a bad call or a missed call or something. He doesn't have time to go over and jaw at the referee while the next play or two are run and get his point across. He's got to be there with his play sheet ready to go. He can't have somebody else. You know what I mean? Here, here's my thing. I've, I've watched 10,000 NFL games. I've seen a million coaches yell at the refs. I've never seen the refs change a call. Not to change the so call, what but is just it? to – Honestly, it's It does more nothing. It. it does nothing. Most of the times if you're yelling at the officials, they're just going to get pissed and go against you anyways because you're annoying them. No, but a lot of times it will at least signal to your players that you got their back. And I think maybe that's where Phil's coming from a little bit I don't on think that. you have to put on a show for your players. Not I put, think I'm not saying the, put on a show. I think that's – I think they know – if they if they have to see you get rowdy at the refs to think you have their back – then you're, already you're, lost you, you lost them already. Yeah, That is done in training camp, behind the scenes, in the locker room, at practice, one-on-one -on -one meetings. That's that's like the culture you built. Just freaking out on the refs literally does nothing. And if Stefanski were to do it, we would all know it was fake because it's not his personality. Right. So it would just be him being fake. Guess what doesn't fly in professional sports locker rooms? Being fake. So I to me, like – when I hear people complaining about Stefanski, he's not animated enough. He doesn't yell at you. It does nothing. It literally does nothing. If you're a coach who does yell at the refs, okay, that's fine. But if that's your personality, but not yelling at the refs has zero bearing on anything the Browns do as a team. Zero. And I and I understand that. And I don't not necessarily freaking out on the refs or losing your mind. But like I was saying. He can't go over and have a conversation with the referee to clarify something or to say, hey, look, you got to you got to be looking out for this is what's been happening out here. You're missing this. He can't have those conversations as it's happening because he's calling the plays. He's I, I feel like some of his head coaching duties that he could do better are neglected. I don't know. I, no, I, I kind of would like I don't know if this is what Phil meant too, but I worry that. <clears throat> and we've talked about this before, but maybe a lack of personality as far as when you're on the sideline, does that transfer to where we're missing, like, drive from players? I know at the end of the day they're paid, they're professional players, but, like, you look at the Cleveland Browns and there's an, a serious lack of urgency. There's a lack of passion to me. Like, it just looks like we're going through the motions. And I could be completely wrong saying that, but just when I watch them, I go, especially yesterday after – just Jalen Warren and Najee Harris just running it down there, you know, just beating them down for three quarters. They didn't look like they wanted to be there. No. And, and I'm not saying it's the coach's fault, but. No, but I, I think even like in the real world, you know, like where you're at your job or whatever, and, and, you know, these players are out there the whole game. They're tired and all this stuff, and they're, they're giving a lot of their energy to this game. And then if they, it's easy to look over even just in the real world, look at your boss and be like, ah, if you don't care, I don't care. Yeah, I know I'm getting paid to be there, but sometimes like I'm just so tired, I've done so much, and it's like, he doesn't care about this, I don't care about it. And I'm afraid that maybe, and I think that might be what Phil's kind of alluding to as well, that oh, if Coach doesn't care, what do we care? And that's not good. No, it's not a respectable quality either. No. But it's <laughs> as a boss. As a boss. <laughs> as a, not as the boss. Oh, yeah, okay. In his analogy of just an employee, you know, the best employees can work well without a supervisor present. That's fair. You know, but... But it's a very common trait that you have to be able to, you know, work around and coach around. So I, you got to see both sides. And it's a lot easier to replace a coach than it is to replace 12 players. My thing is, is two seasons ago, we praised Kevin Stefanski for being even keeled, never getting too high, never getting too low, just being the same guy all the time. Keep in the, the team had his temperament of – we're just focused, head down. Now, just because all of a sudden the team doesn't seem focused doesn't mean Kevin Stefanski should change his entire – I mean, we were literally praising him for this two years ago. The, we go pull the episodes. The only thing I'll say is 
<clears throat> when we were praising him, it came with results. We were winning. That's, winning, winning changes. We also played with a fourth place schedule that year, and we had the easiest. And we're going to have that schedule this year. And there was yes, and there was no fans in the stadiums. Yeah, every teams was, and we were one of those teams. But a lot of teams were playing with practice squad players because they were out with COVID. Mm-hmm. Like there was other circumstances that season. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we got any more voicemails about the game. Uh, yeah, we got one more here from Brown Tiger. Hey, Browns fans, this is the Brown Tiger. I've let myself cool down a little bit from this game. Really, really ticked off. What a complete failure as a team. Number one, I want to say this. The O-line, who are you blocking? That's the number one thing I want to say. Just going to let anybody go through and sack Watson? How is Watson supposed to get in any rhythm when you're just going to let anybody, just let anybody, come and sack Watson? Yes, I know Watson has to have a little bit more time to throw the ball because that's who Watson is. But why the hell are you just going to let anybody go free and sack Watson? That was atrocious by the O-line. Number two, I love Watson, but Watson, you got to notice the check down is open, right? You're, You're too much of wanting the big play and not seeing that you've got a wide open check down. I've seen so many times this game you had a wide open check down and you didn't throw the ball. Come on, Watson. But that's what I got. Go Browns. What a sucky game. <laughs> I will say that, you know, I know Watson was able to improvise a lot yesterday, use his legs, get some yards, get some first downs. It was good to see that. But at the same time, it really sucked because most of the times he's running for his life. Yeah. And that's yeah. not what I wanted to see Deshaun Watson do <laughs> behind our offensive line. I saw a metric. It was like midway through the third or start of the fourth. He had ran 660 some yards. <laughs> Really? In the game. And now Shoot. now that counts like um designed runs. It counts um side to side, right? So, yep, Just it counts handoffs, that kind of stuff. Okay. But still a lot. But still, how much are you really running on a, if you turn around, hand it off, and stand there? So you ran about two a yard yards. or two. Yeah. You know, uh and we didn't run the ball that much. So he ran, yeah, this was this was about Late third quarter, he had run, traveled 666.78 yards on all plays combined. And we weren't even done with the game yet. <laughs> it was and like that, Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl against the Bucks. Yeah, and that translated to 44 rushing yards on the ground. <laughs> yeah, 606. Yeah. It's wild. Um, I'll say this. I'm not a, I'm not a, like a run-the-ball Kevin kind of guy. But we did not try to run the ball enough yesterday. And I know <laughs> – and, and maybe – Kevin had the same philosophy we had, I think, a couple weeks ago. We said, quit trying to run the ball. Just let Deshaun go out there and try to get loose. But at some point, like you had against the Steelers, you got to have a little bit of balance. Freaking TJ Watt's good. Well, and I, that's, <laughs> the, that's the thing right there. There's no adjustment. Like you can go out there and say, okay, we're going to try to turn Deshaun loose. And then it's like, we can't. We can't do it today. They're getting after him. Our line's not holding. We got we to gotta adjust and run the ball more. And, well, and, and I. It's sometimes it's tough because we get so many stupid freaking penalties, so we're yes, true. always behind the chains, okay? Or you know, first down we get no yards, but we we made it a one possession game late in that game before the defense just let them march down and score. We could have been there's still a whole quarter to go. We still could have ran the ball some. Nick Chubb is averaging six point four yards a carry. Uh, like I said, normally I'm not one of these guys who's just screaming, "Give the ball to Chubb, give the ball," but. We were running the ball with some success, and it, it was obvious they were just pinning their ears back. We yeah. didn't need to be in only throw mode so soon. Other games where that people have been screaming for Chubb to get the ball, I've thought, you guys are stupid. Like, we weren't doing anything on the ground. This game, we were actually doing something on the ground, and and we, we wouldn't run. Nick Chubb had 1,500 yards this year. Yeah. So to, to, to the people who say, a lot of people said, Nick Chubb, D- Stefanski won't use Nick Chubb. He's third in the league in the attempts, third in the league in yards, tied for fifth in touchdowns, tied for non- ninth in um, yards per attempt average. He got plenty. He had over 300 carries this yeah. year. He got plenty of run. Yes, he did. So um, situationally, I guess you could make some arguments, but if you're going to give him the ball in those situations and you couldn't, then you're not giving it to him earlier in the game. Because he can't have many more carries in a season. No, I mean, no running back can. I mean, what, what does Derrick Henry have? 
I mean, I think like their tops are like three three fifty. Three fifty is like uh, the like the max workload for a running back. I think. Yeah. I mean, so, not, you know what I mean, like that they can legitimately handle. Yes. Mm. So it, it's tough. I am excited to watch Jerome Ford next year. I I, I don't want to. I'm not kicking Cream Hunt out the door, but. He, he did not impress me this year. No, and, you know, I love Kareem Hunt. We all do. You know, great Brown. You know, it was great to have him on the team. We know he's not going to be back. Yeah, so I agree. I am excited to watch Jerome Ford next year. He looks sure. explosive mm-hmm. in the kick return game. So I'm excited to see what he can do in the run game. Um, but, yeah, I just – I wanted to touch on that. Like, why did we give up on the run game? And, so and at early? one point, eventually their defense just became, we're going to send three and just drop everybody back and just confuse – you know, you're already talking about a quarterback who's, I don't think, 100% trusting what he sees as far as his reads and everything like that. Well, then you're just mixing it up, just sending three. Remember? Yeah. It's and, a tough and, game. And, and Jed Wills, and I don't want to beat a guy down when he got hurt. I heard it um, just in MCL, so probably not going to have surgery or anything. Um, but he, his effort is – I've never watched an NFL player just stop mid play as much as him. <laughs> like he he will literally kick back and pass pro, and if his guy beats him, that's it. He just gives up, <laughs> just <laughs> like a mummy. Yes, and I understood you got beat, but why don't you chase the guy? <laughs> Try to go so he does at least so he's not just like hanging on your do something, especially with a quarterback that can. Move around back there, you know, maybe escape that guy that you just let get by you. Yeah, so then turn if you're around, ha- and now if you block him back the other way, you're good. Yes. You've made up for it. Like, the the line needs to learn how to block for a scrambling quarterback. Uh, yes. So, I I was going to touch on that. Somebody, that they're making a big argument about that. Like, the line, they the linemen don't know how to protect a scrambling quarterback. And I'm like, don't you think at just some point, like, in your career as a football player, especially if you're a lineman, I mean, he was at Alabama. Didn't he play with Tua? Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah, Tua's not that scrambling. I mean, no, but he, he, can, he was mobile. Yeah, I, I don't like. I've I heard that same thing, and it was just I don't know. Maybe to, I'm dumbfounded. To on me, that. Jedrick Wills is a hundred percent. It's effort. Yeah, uh, he he fair. literally just stops and watches. <laughs> it's like he's window shopping. Yeah, uh, you know, he just he housewives. He just watches all the time. No offense to housewives. <laughs> but it, it Jesus. I can't believe he puts that on tape and, and gets to still go out and play it. You can just pull it up. And I think he grades out decent because when he, when he makes contact and he doesn't get beat, then, you know, he blocks and the, okay, he looks okay. Or Deshaun makes his guy miss. So the pressure he gave up isn't as big of a deal, but you just watch him. He just literally sits and watches all the time. It, it's terrible. Or he's supposed to close this gap down on a run and the dude just beats him to the gap every freaking time, and then he just stands there and watches him tackle the running back. No, just like bro, just give some effort. If if I knew like, you know, I was on the shit list, I'd at least be making it look like I was trying really hard. Maybe like shaking <laughs> my head really hard. But do something, fool us at least. That's that's not gonna fool me. <laughs> you know I mean? Until you let your guy go back, but you're doing this. You know what I mean? Like do something. Act like you care is what you're saying. Yeah. Like, Maybe you don't care, but just act like. Like it. I know you look sweet in your visor and your arm sleeves, lineman. <laughs> you know, like how many linemen wear dark visors and arm sleeves? You might like be the only one I've ever seen. We need more dogs. Yeah, we don't Not need cats. more cats. There it is. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> he he's just. Mm. Do you guys see Jamal Williams got his? I think it was his second touchdown last night. With the offensive line just bullied the defensive line. Like we need that. Yes, I could have gotten a touchdown. That. Yeah, I was gonna say point. we had that at one point. The, uh, that's the thing with Will is he's he definitely is not that nitty gritty tough nose fighter. It's kind of weird that he played for Saban. I know. Um, and then another pre, another group that needs to learn to play with a scrambling quarterback is the wide receiver. Yep. Unit. Oh, like they open. they need to learn like the play. It's like they're so used to playing in this offense where, okay, I got, I got to run my 10 yard post. And once I run it, if the ball didn't come to me, play is dead. No, not anymore. You run your post and you look over your shoulder and you see him running. Go that direction. Go deep. <laughs> yeah. If you're deep, you come back. If you're a shallow route, you go deep. Do, do something. The play's not dead yet. It's like there's no improvisation. And Watson's used to that. That's how you get, that's how you get big plays. That's how Mahomes gets a ton of big plays. He's running around back. Th- you think Andy Reid called um, 
shotgun, Y right, 80, Patrick Mahomes, run around, jump, throw it, 40, 50 <laughs> yards. No, that's just him running around, and a receiver saw that his quarterback was in trouble, scramble drill, and then Pat Mahomes finds him for a deep play. That's Deshaun is looking to do that kind of stuff, and nobody's getting open, and he gets sacked seven times. It's like, come on, guys, look back at your quarterback every once in a while. Yeah, and I think that's definitely a result of Watson coming in after 11 games. And I think that any sort of practice, chemistry, whatever you want to call it, from the preseason, you know, from training camp, that had all gone away because everybody had gotten used to Jacoby. They're in their midseason form. He's not – I just the, – the recipe was set up for disaster from the beginning when they suspended him for 11 games. I, I, I'm looking forward to next – Take your, your month off or whatever here, and then I hope we just hear report after report after report that all these guys, like the, it's Big Brother house. They're all living yes. together, and every day they go out and play touch football and just please put in the time this offseason because we as fans, like, we deserve that, please. Because <laughs> I, I can't. I can't watch my team go out and get what I believe to be a franchise quarterback only for – him to not be a franchise quarterback. Like, I just, I can't mentally go through that. I'll just take a long walk off a short cliff. Um, <laughs> I just, so please, I just want to hear reports of they're down to Miami doing whatever and they're all working out. And then I want them all in OTAs and, and all that. So hopefully that's what we get because ne- next year's make or break. If, if it's not good next year, it's start over again. No, I think it's start over completely. Yeah. Like, but, yes, coaching staff. I think our, we'll have like our like seven to 10 core players. And other than that, it's going to be complete overhaul. House. See, the thing that it, the encouraging thing with Watson moving forward into next year is you saw his leadership with the team. You, you heard nothing but positive glowing reports from teammates, right? Nobody had a bad thing to say. Everything was he's, he's a great leader. We love having him in the locker room, blah, blah, blah. Those are good signs. Yes. He's not out there dogging the coaching staffs, making stupid comments, doing stupid things like we have with previous quarterbacks. So they actually asked him if he the they asked him, I think, today, you know, are you still happy with your choice to come to Cleveland? He said, I love being Cleveland. I love this locker room. I love this coaching staff. Uh, my family likes coming up to visit Cleveland. I love it here. So he's saying all and the right things. And he's staying in Cleveland. He's not going home. No, he's staying in Cleveland. I know so, he just nice. bought a sweet house. I bet. So I bet. yeah, he's got the, he's, he's got, got the money. Funds. Dogs. This episode of the Dogs Podcast is brought to you by Built Bar. Come on now, everybody. We've all had those protein bars that are chalky and just nasty. And as soon as you take a bite, you're like, "Do I really got to finish this thing?" Built Bar is the world's first ever candy bar protein bar this is a protein bar but man you swear you're eating a candy bar to give you guys a good idea it's kind of the consistency of a three musketeers bar and they have so many delicious flavors i mean you bite into this thing you don't think you're eating a protein bar you don't think you're eating something that's healthy for you You think you're eating a good old junk food snack food candy bar baby these things are awesome order yourself a box of built bar try all their different flavors or just try the ones you love whatever you want to do these things are perfect fill your cabinet you will not regret giving Built Bar a try. And right now, if you go to Built.com, use promo code BARK, B-A-R-K, when you check out, get 10% off your order when you order today with code BARK at Built.com. Um, okay, so that's pretty much what we'll talk about the game. Now we'll get into um, the exciting news for the day here. We're going to talk about the Browns fire, finally answering all of our prayers and p- relieving Joe Woods of his duties. I do want... I don't like to cheer for guys to be jobless. He probably has like a wife and kids, so that part of it sucks. But at the same time, like it's a results business, and if you're not doing it, like they have to let you go. You had plenty of time to be better. You'll get to be a position coach somewhere. I'm sure you'll land on your feet. Uh, but yeah, so we got a couple of voicemails talking about Joe Woods firing. Yep, here we go with Brown Tiger with this. I finally got the notification. <laughs> Thank goodness they made the right decision. And Joe Woods has been fired by the Browns. Thank God. Now we'll have an able, and I'll have a chance to get the right defensive coordinator for the job. Finally, you make a right decision after a horrible three seasons. I'm, I'm sorry. That's all I feel like about that. Thank goodness we got rid of Joe Woods. All the best to you, new inve- endeavors. See ya. Go Browns. Uh, I did see that also. 
Kevin Stefanski would not commit to Mike Prefer when asked about him today. Really? So I thought since he had, wasn't let go this morning, I was uh, like, and uh, I heard re- there were reports from um, like other people, reporters saying that this was going to be the only move they made. I uh, now, obviously, the new defensive coordinator will get to bring in a staff, but. Uh, I was under the uh, the assumption that Prefer had somehow survived. Uh, Tony Grossi on Twitter said Kevin Stefanski would not rule out other changes on his coaching staff. Said he will meet with other assistants over the course of the week. Would not commit to Mike Prefer. I'll say this: Stefanski's what pe- some people don't like about him with the the hooting and holler and stuff. And the, to me, he seems a little bit, um, which is why I don't get when people say he doesn't have control. He seems a little bit like cold and calculated. Like, he's, like, almost like a robot. Like, well, he just walk up to him and be like, hey, you're not on the team anymore. See ya. Well, and the thing <laughs> that I – and we didn't get to talk about this last week, obviously, because it happened later in the week. But the thing that was – I mean, it sucked to see the clowny situation, but it was cool to see that the team instantly was like, why don't you just go home? But Can we just talk about that for, like, a minute? Absolutely. Yes. Who does Jadavian Clowney think he is? I don't know. That was pretty – that was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're mad because they're trying to get better matchups for Miles Garrett, and I like I saw somebody. Say, what are you talking about? We barely move Miles around, <laughs> and Miles is in the top of the league of getting double teamed. So he's getting that's statistically provable, Jadavian, you idiot. <laughs> <It's> so if <laughs> Miles is getting double teamed all the time, why aren't you feasting? Yeah, it's the Browns' fault. We're just we're not trying to win. We're just trying to get Miles in the Hall of Fame. The dude's getting double teamed every play, and you still only had two sacks. <laughs> You've never had ten in a season. This dude's ego is unbelievable. He is so much better than what he actually is. He's great at stopping the run, but this this dude thinks he's prime JJ Watt. Yeah, Reggie White, and he's. He's just a solid player. He and that's it. There's a bro, you've been a free agent the last two years and nobody wanted you. Correct. So was it Tennessee's fault nobody wanted you? Was it Houston's fault? Yeah, it's it's crazy. This guy, this dude. We made we put out a video two years ago before when he <laughs> turned us down the first time and we dogged him. And then we got him, and we and so you know we we bought into him, and he had a pretty good year last year, but didn't can't change your spots, you know. <laughs> I mean that was I mean, whenever I heard that I was just like, dude, what are you talking about? You sound that's ignorant. It was uh, one of the dumbest comments he could have made. And I just thought the timing was bad, and you know what I mean. You're like literally a day before you're about to play. That's what I was a talking big about. Rivalry. Was somebody day like the season is a couple days away from we being over. Wait. You can't yeah, you can't just wait yeah. and shut up for a minute. Like let well, us finish like, out the season. Uh, My god. He said that to did he say was that Mary to, Kay, wasn't it? It's was yeah. Like, you couldn't wait a couple days to put it out Mary Kay. You just had to rush to get it out before the Steelers oh, game. Oh, but the thing is though, she's just doing her job as a reporter. Uh, he <laughs> didn't have to say anything. That's what? the thing like and who reaches out for that interview? Does she say, "Hey, do you have any beef you want to talk about with the Browns?" Or you say, "Hey, I got something I want to say. I want you to put it out." I, as a player, that stuff doesn't get said if you don't say it. Oh, I I agree with that. No, I agree. She's doing her job, but it's like, are you a Browns fan, Mary Kay? Like, she's a uh, Mary Kay yeah. fan first. You could you could you could have report you could have put that out. You know, last night, <laughs> <laughs> like you had to rush to get it out two days before the Steelers game. Yeah, just to create some controversy before the game. Yeah. Like, come on. Um, but I'm just glad that the the move was instantly. We're done. Just go home. Yeah, they yes. just sent him home. It's just another another chapter closing. <laughs> yeah, on our one it wasn't coming team. He wasn't coming back next year. I know. Was. No, but I know. Um, we got another voicemail about Joe Woods. We do. Last one for the day. This is Kenny Mack. Hey guys, it's Kenny Mack, and thank God the season's over. What a disappointment. <laughs> I mean, the defense alone just cost us so much. But I guess Joe Woods paid the price for that. He had a half a year that was maybe good. And uh, let me know who you want for a defensive coordinator. Also, just about the offense, uh, just super disappointing the way uh, Watson came back. Obviously, he's rusty. There was some weather and all this kind of stuff. But uh, the, cl- the offense literally looks clunky. I just don't like the play calling in this last game that just ended. I just thought we passed too much, missed some stuff that was open. And uh, I thought we really could have played the same game that the Steelers did. We could have just bared down, uh, ran Nick Chubb and uh, won the game. But I also am disappointed with Kareem Hunt and the way we utilize him. But let me know your thoughts. Cheers. I think we kind of touched on 
the game, the game, and how why, you know why why didn't we? So, but yeah, back to yeah. Joe Woods. Oh, so obviously Joe's gone. Yeah, and it's not. I don't want people to get it twisted too. Like just because Joe Woods get got fired doesn't all of a sudden mean like we're guaranteed to be good. The players, it. I blame a lot on Joe Woods and his philosophy, but the players still sucked. You know, they, they still miscommunicated all the time, didn't tackle for shit, you know. So the players got to buy in. J- John Johnson today, when they asked him what he's looking for in a new defensive coordinator, he said, oh, somebody who can get you to play for. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I Coaches are supposed to. Coaching is important. Motivation is important. Getting the most out of your guys is important. Putting them in the right position to utilize their skills is important. But, dude, you're still a professional athlete. At the end of the day, you should still go out and play hard. It's your freaking job. Mm-hmm. Like, and, I mean, so what, you didn't want to play for Kevin? Yeah. Like, you still have other coaches you could play for. What about the guys on your team? The guys on your team. The team, it's, yeah, the team itself. You play for the Browns. Yeah, I, like – the fans, I your your job, your future. Hopefully, you can get another contract. Like, what are you what are you guys doing out there? Yeah, You're to, putting garbage on tape. We talked about that with Wills. To me, that that comment told me like, hey, we quit on this dude months ago. Yeah, we quit. We, he couldn't get us to play, so we we just quit. Like that. That's what that comment told me. And I think Miles started dropping hints forever ago. Yeah, and then the clowny stuff comes out. It almost seemed like an orchestrated effort by players to get him out of here. I don't think they like playing in the system at all. No, it was evident, clearly evident on the field. I, I don't think Denzel Ward liked it. I, I don't. I think the players were not a fan. No, they talked about the lack of adjustments, all kinds of stuff. So look at. I just thought of this. Look at the difference between a guy like Denzel Ward, who's been in the league what five years, six years, something like that, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Pro Bowler, you know, highest pay, whatever, all that stuff. And then you got Martin Emerson, rookie. Which one played harder this year? Harder. Oh, definitely Martin Emerson. Right, because he's the rookie. He's out there. He's like, I have to play hard. I got to make a name for myself. I got to earn my spot. Denzel Ward, you can see, I don't need to earn anything. So he can quit. Yeah. You see it from some of these older, more established players, and that's very unfortunate. Um, But, yeah, so before we wrap up the episode that I want to transition quickly, which we probably haven't. He just got fired this morning, so we haven't done a ton of research, but I saw the Browns have already requested to interview uh, Gerard Mayo from the Patriots. I believe he's yep. their linebackers coach. Correct. So I think somebody said he also he calls their defense. Defensive assistant is what I saw. He calls the plays for their defense. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty much – I feel like that's Bill's defense. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've requested to interview Brian Flores, which I think is – everybody's guy that they want right now. And then we requested to interview Jim Schwartz. Correct. And is there anybody else? I think those are the three. Uh, three Seattle's uh, defensive coordinator. I uh, saw his name kind of. Okay. Is there anybody that comes to your guys' mind of who you want? And I know uh, I'll throw another name out there. Lovey Smith just got fired by the Texans. Lovey Smith. Yep. I don't think Lovey Smith's a great head coach at all. Um, I I know the Texans are getting a lot of shit right now for firing him after one year, two years in a row. They've done it now, um, but I fully expected him to only be there one year. Um, yeah, real quick, Broncos defensive coordinator. I'm gonna try this. Azero Evero, mm, okay, also in play as a candidate. Which okay. you, that's only possible because they fired Hackett. So I'm assuming the new head coach will bring, bring in his own staff. And Denver's defense for the majority of this season was spectacular. I feel like they just awesome. quit at the end. Yeah, they just the whole team was done. Yep. Um I know who I've really I have liked Jim Schwartz for a long time. I I'm a big Jim Schwartz fan. I, I don't think they could go wrong with Flores or Schwartz. I to me if I had to pick one, Schwartz is the one I want and just cuz only just personal preference in terms of I've been a fan of his from even when he was in Detroit. Mm-hmm. I've just always liked his defenses, and I've just I've just always been a fan of his. I'm not anti Brian Flores. I'd be super pumped if we got him. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we were to go get Schwartz, we would have Andrew Barry would have to change his mind on how he values interior D line. Jim Schwartz is very much about a a powerful front four. He's had Albert Hainsworth and Dominic Sue. Um, 
when he won the Super Bowl for the Eagles, he had another uh, super good interior D lineman. Is Fletcher been, Cox? That's, I was thinking Fletcher, but I didn't know if he was. But this dude, anytime this guy is take over a defense, it goes from bad to good, this like instantly. Um, and I just think he's got a little bit of nasty in him. He's a little bit. He's not quite as insane as Greg Williams, but I think he's kind of got like he's more on that spectrum. We need a little of that. Yes, we and need I a little lo- gritty. Out of those, out of all the guys, the two guys is, is for me is Schwartz and Flores. Be, a lot of it has to do with the fact that they were former head coaches. So they kind. I like the idea of having that defensive coordinator understanding the role, the responsibilities, the pressures, and everything that Kevin's going through. Which is, I don't know anything about Gerard Mayo, but I'm out on him for the sole fact that he. We don't need another inexperienced coach on the staff. Correct. In my opinion. Where uh where are you guys at on uh Zimmer? I would I would I would he's a good defensive coordinator. Absolutely. Um head coaching come, experience. Yes. Would he come and work for the guy that he used to be Correct. the boss of? I Correct. don't know. Yeah. And be a little weird, right? Yeah, he kinda old now. I don't know. He I wouldn't be mad if we hired him at all. I do think we need a guy that can be like this this right here, this side of the ball, this is mine. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure like Kevin will have some type of input here and there, but I'd like somebody that just comes in and that's their well, unit. And with Kevin almost acting as the offensive coordinator as, lo- as well as the head coach, you know, with Van Pelt, whatever, it would be nice to have like a, like a Flores or a Schwartz with that head coaching experience to say this whole side of the ball, don't even worry about it. I got it right, and I can handle you know from A to Z everything you need to worry about. I got. Yep, be an assistant head coach or whatever. Um, yeah. What about you, John? Do you know any of these guys? <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know people want to hear more from John. <laughs> guys, do. if you want to hear more from John, tune into the after hours today. We're making John He's run it. He's hosting it. Does he do it by himself? I thought we were leaving. Yeah, it's going to be a monologue. You know, you know how to turn know. everything off. Right? I'll just do it by myself. <laughs> That'd be excellent. That'd be yeah, so I good. know their names, Blake. I know their names. <laughs> okay. I don't watch a lot of non Browns football, so. Um, but I'm with Josh. I like your ideas of people with head coaching experiences. Mm-hmm. Probably the best way to go. Uh, I think. I think Kevin's got so much on his plate. I think that's one of the reasons he's maybe so looked like he's suffered. Do you think he should be calling plays then? I mean, here's the thing: I could be wrong. I almost think Kevin would be better calling plays than not being a head coach, but that's not possible. He's not going to take a demotion. <laughs> uh, I would. I'm. I don't know. I'm really curious to see how Kevin would be as a head coach with someone calling plays for him, just to ease the stress. But I don't know if that's going to happen either. So I don't think so. Buddy, yeah. But I mean, go. what does he need freed up to do? Yell at the officials? It's not. <laughs> you know it's I mean? not anything specific like that. It's. It's more. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I get that. Our offense sometimes, man. I don't know. I just, I just think there's a lot of stuff that happens during the course of a football game where if you're the head coach and you're trying to call, I just feel like there's a certain amount of the games offensively that you're not a part of because you're just you're focused on what's on the play sheet, what's going on in the field. The guys that maybe just came off the field, you can't step aside and talk to them for a minute and, and address anything with them because you're so focused on just what's happening on the field. I don't know. I mean, it's been three years of it, and the question – no one is saying that Kevin, 100% for sure, should be calling plays. That has not been established after three years. Yeah, I'm not saying he year. should or shouldn't. What's that? It was after one year. After the year that you said was the bad uh, – <laughs> In high – I'm just saying, after, after, after his first realize. year, nobody was complaining about him calling the plays. And nobody was complaining about Baker either. We all wanted him to sign a long-term contract. Hey, that's so, a good hey, point. Time – Time changes everything, man. I I, I don't know. It will be this top ten offense if through the first exactly. how many games. I know. Then there's but that. The too. thing is, I never thought we looked like a top ten offense. We just had a top ten offense somehow. We never looked that high powered. Right. Efficiency. Well, we were top ten in efficiency, so you can't say efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> like we were literally top ten in efficiency. No, that's I just I'm saying we never looked like a super high powered offense. Well, they, uh, they, I get we had a, we had a backup Browns offense next to the Chiefs we, offense, and we had a They're backup quarterback. Thing. Well, it's just, it was the same way with the year we went to the when we went to the playoffs. We were averaging almost thirty points a game. We just did it differently. I just don't feel like we beat up on anyone this year, and we have. It's impossible to beat up on somebody when your defense gives up forty points a game. Well, and the other thing to think about with p- these potential former head coaches coming in, does that cause any sort of strife heading into next year where? 
We start 0-3. Kevin's on the hot seat, and everybody's saying, just fire him and put Flores in and move him up to head coach. Like, do you do you increase the risk of that kind of stuff happening? I don't think so because, like, if we were to fire Kevin Stefanski, I don't want a defensive head coach. I would want to go find an offensive head coach. Right. That's, like, the way the league is going. Um, some defensive guys do okay, but for the most part, a lot of these defensively defensive-minded head coaches – suck they end up as defensive coordinators yes so um that's not a problem for me now could they step in and be an interim coach okay maybe um but i don't know we'll see uh i'm ex- i'm excited to hear some names i hope they make a hire quickly i don't i hope it doesn't take forever well hey we are in the best part of brown's season the off season baby we <laughs> yes get this. this is where hope gets restored hype gets renewed and we all sound like Idiots again. If we had a first round draft pick, it'd be, we'd <laughs> oh, be on, man. we're on our Super Bowl run. We would have yeah. done mock draft 1.0 already. <laughs> yeah. Today. So much fun. Gage <laughs> Tucker already sent a mock draft. I I'm saw like, it. This yeah. has been done for 16 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who any of these players are. That's fair. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, the, the, the show is going to get, get uh, a lot more fun. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys stay with us throughout the off season. Um, we'll try to bring the energy, but we are going to wrap this one up. Let us know what you guys thought, um, of the game. Let us know what you think about Joe Woods hiring. Who do you want the Browns, uh, to go get to replace him? We talked a lot all about a lot of stuff today. Do you think Stefanski should be calling plays? All that good stuff. Drop them in the comments. Uh, if you want more content, join the dogs.com. Come hang out with us on the after hours show. Um, we're going to be here throughout all the playoffs. It'll probably start becoming, we'll talk, you know, any Browns news and we're going to talk playoff football, all that good stuff. So make sure you, uh, you keep checking in every week, make sure you subscribe, make sure you tap the notification bell. Um, and we had somebody comment and said they like our stuff, but they want shorter videos. We put out the dog bites sometimes, but if you like shorter videos, go check us out on TikTok. Well, and all the TikTok videos are on YouTube as shorts. So, yes. I mean, the reels are all there. So <clears throat> yeah. if you want it, it's out there somewhere. Um, so keep checking us out. We appreciate you guys being here. Was this the third season now? Yep. So this was the third full f- uh, Brown season that we've done this mm. um, show for. So that's pretty, pretty cool. exciting. So we yep. appreciate a lot of you people. You g- have been here since the beginning. Uh, so we, we, we appreciate that. So thanks for hanging in with us for another disappointing season. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll get through this off season. August is right around the corner. We'll be starting football season right back up with brand new optimism only for it to be crushed by week two, but we can't wait. That's why we're Browns fans. So thank you once again for being here with us and we will see you guys all next week. Talking something. (laughs) Talking something. That's good. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.